At CES 2022, this year, there was a lot of mind-blowing technology. I was able to use force feedback gloves that allowed me to grab a can and then crush it. I was able to try a VR shirt with sensation technology that allowed me to feel pain, such as being stabbed in virtual reality. I was also able to try one of the most expensive VR headsets, which cost over $10,000, along with a ton of other VR technology. Now, I've always wanted to go to CES since I first heard about it almost a decade ago. So finally being able to go was a dream come true for me. It was like going to Disneyland. And for those that don't know, CES is one of the biggest consumer electronics shows in the world with companies both big and small showing off their latest innovations. The future of virtual reality is insane. So in this video, I'll give you a quick overview of the coolest VR tech that I got to try at CES 2022. Let me know in the comments which feature videos you'd like to see. Let's start with VR headsets and displays. First is XTAL 3 Mixed Reality by VR Engineers. It features 8K resolution with two 4K high density LCD displays and custom built non Fresnel lenses. It also has precision eye tracking, which means you don't need to adjust the IPD settings. It has possibly the widest field of view in any headset with 180 degrees. The XTAL 3 mixed reality is extremely powerful, but it's also extremely expensive at $11,000. $500. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have $12,000 just laying around for a headset. And even if you did, this headset is primarily made for Air Force personnel so they can do flight training. I was pretty worried about this demo actually because normally I get motion sick when flying in VR, which is why I use a bunch of different motion sickness prevention tricks. However, even with the intense motion of flying a fighter jet, I didn't get motion sick at all. I think the huge field of view is just really something else. And even though this isn't available for the average person just yet, the fact that this technology exists and is being developed means that it will eventually be integrated to consumer products in the near future, making virtual reality that much more immersive. Speaking of VR nausea, there was a company at CES called Boarding Ring who was making a product called Synetic VR to stop VR motion sickness. Basically, it's two additional side panels that are inserted in your headset to give you peripheral vision. After seeing this product, it made so much more sense why I didn't get sick from the XTAL's extremely wide FOV headset. While I'm all for this kind of technology, the price point is pretty steep, $400. So I don't know if I'll end up getting this, but maybe if the price came down to $100, I would consider it. Next, I got to try this combined AR VR headset by a Korean company called May. Their headset uses L-Cause technology to project images on clear lenses. This means you can remove the front panel and go from VR to AR. This was just a prototype and is not on the consumer market right now, but in the future, something like this may make its way to the consumer market. And this can be one way that will bridge the gap between AR and VR. Moving on to gloves, I'm sure most of you here are familiar with the haptics for their very popular tax suit of VR haptic vest. Speaking of which, I still need to review mine in an upcoming video, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. But today I'll actually be talking about their newly revealed product called Tact Gloves. This is a glove that has haptic feedback on the fingertips. My fingertips would vibrate when I pet a cat in hand physics lab or touched an object, so the sensation was interesting to say the least. When I play the multiplayer demo, we were able to grab magic bolts and lightning to throw at each other. I felt extremely powerful as if I was Thor or Zeus or something. So this part was incredible, but I think I need to see what other games this gets integrated to before I can decide if it's worth getting or not, especially at the price point of $300. A technology I'm really excited about is force feedback gloves. Now, unlike happy which provides vibration, force feedback is all about restraining your movements. So during my demo of Sense Gloves Force Feedback Gloves, ooh, that's a mouthful, I was able to grab a can and then crush it. Due to the tension on my fingers, there's actually resistance when I hold something in VR, making it feel almost as if I'm holding an object in real life. 
I'll make a follow-up video going into more details on this, but there's tension wires running through each of the joints on your fingers and depending on what you're holding, the string tension will either increase or decrease. While it doesn't exactly feel like you're holding something in real life, you get a good sense of added immersion, especially since the glove has finger tracking and you no longer have to use a controller. Unfortunately, this glove is mostly for enterprise purposes and costs $5,000. However, trying the Sense Gloves makes me really excited about the future of VR input. Hopefully one day we can get rid of controllers altogether. Now this next one, I wasn't even sure if I would mention it since I didn't get a proper working demo, but I got to try on the Tesla Force Feedback Gloves just to see See how they fit. The larger external shell on the Tesla suit gloves made me feel like I was half a robot. If I ever get a demo of this, I'll let you guys know what I think. Finally, it's time to talk about the time that I got stabbed in VR and it actually hurt. When I posted about this on Twitter, I got really mixed feedback. A lot of people thought it was cool, but a lot of others have said they wouldn't want to feel pain while playing VR. Regardless, here's a quick overview of the OWO game VR shirt. It uses electrode sensation technology, which each intensity can range from 0 to 80. I was around 25 for most of my zones. When the electrodes are triggered, they make your muscles contract. This is very different from haptics, which mostly feel like a massage. This needs to be worn on bare skin, so no clothes under. And there's 10 zones all over your body from your chest, abs, arms, and back. The most amazing part of this demo was how precise the sensation was. For example, I was able to feel bug bites all over my chest and they were little tiny pinpoints all over rather than a vibration in a general area. There's a lot more I can say about this, like how it compares to be haptic vest, but I'll save that for another video. The shirt can be used for VR or also for regular 2D gaming. And you know, this technology is both scary because of the pain that you feel, but it's also pretty amazing amazing and the precision means you can feel wind with great accuracy or recoil from shooting or even the impact of your arm from holding a shield that has been hit. This might be my favorite technology that I tried at CES and the most mind-blowing part is that they are targeting a price point of $450 in October. The only other technology or VR that exists like this is Tesla suit and that costs a whopping $12,000. Which of these products did you find the most fascinating or would you want to try the most? As I said, I'll be making follow-up videos going into details, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, a huge thank you to my three Patreons, Brian, O'Hiley, and King Cam for supporting my content.